Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Beautiful oh, face you see there is the face of Stephen Pearl. Thank you very much. It's coffee with old Jews. Glad to be here. Funny, yesterday uh, I was interviewing Stephen Kravitz and I introduced him as Stephen Pearl. Great. So, Another yeah. bug eye Judas. That, show, that shows you how old I'm getting. Okay. There you go. There you yeah. go. There you go. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling good. I mastered my Len Barry impression this morning. So. Wait a minute. Len Barry? Remember Len Barry? Here's Len Barry, the singer Len Barry. One, two, three. That's all I got. Oh, I, that was his only hit, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's all I got. I knew my Len Barry. Well, One, it, two, three. You know, please, don't make me feel <laughs> stupid by giving me one-hit wonders, okay? <laughs> well, I admit he was no Lobo, but, uh, you know, he was good. That was a big hit for him. A huge hit, like this big, man. Like, but I wonder if he had to go back to work at UPS or something in order. Oh, to, yeah, yeah, he worked at the carpet store with Del Shannon. Here. Uh, yeah, Take this gun, Del. <laughs> you made this, you ugly son of a bitch well, here. Del, Sh Del Shannon it. had more than one hit. Though. Oh yeah, he had a few. Of them. He had a few. He had a few of them, and then he died. Uh, you wonder where these guys go. You know, I mean, if you have a hit, you have, you know how to get a hit. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, you know. Um, you have one hit, you can play county fairs in the oldie circuit for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, uh, what's his name? Bobby Goldsboro or whoever, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, I, I wonder what happens to them. Like, I often wanted to ask Huey Lewis. Okay, now, Huey Lewis had a string of hits, one yeah. after yeah. another. Right. I mean, maybe, maybe eight in a row, something like that. Right. Then all of a sudden, nothing. Start what that happens? What happens? I think that's all the creativity he might have had. It got sucked dry. He used it all up on eight songs, and now who knows? Yeah. No, but I mean, did he maybe say, uh, "Okay, that's enough for me. I made enough money. It's all over. I don't need to do it anymore." I've you, done know? That too, you know? Yeah. Uh, enough money for those cool Clint Eastwood haircuts he had. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I just wonder what what happens. Now, are you being safe in Nevada? By the way, you know, Nevada has a twenty three percent infection rate. For COVID. Uh, as far as I know, I feel okay, and I've been to the hospital, and I've been to the gym a million times, and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. As far as I know, I'm not sick. If I am sick, I don't know. Have it. you been tested? I was tested before I went into the hospital in late August, and uh, yeah. I have it, so, yeah. I'd say, like, I'd say, you know, I'd say you know, I, I, I know that I shouldn't say this to you, but I only say this out of love, okay? Do not fucking go to the gym, all right? I like the gym. Bro. I did. Great, fun. great. Okay, okay. Go kill yourself. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. That's wonderful. But, but you have something like it's, a, I think it's 53% infection rate right now in Nevada. Right. Yes, that means 53% of all the people tested have COVID. Great. Well, I did shows last week, so I was among people for once, and uh, everyone had masks on, but uh, I just I couldn't stay in the house anymore. Yeah, you know, just, but COVID's gonna get me, get me, man. I got, I got to see people. I got. Well, I, gotta... I don't want it to get you, not because I like you or anything like that, but I need you to be on once every two weeks. Oh know, yeah, you every be every on week, once. you know. Otherwise, it's shuffleboard, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know. So I'm very selfish about it. Speaking of selfish, uh, you know, I, the guy used to be on this program regularly and then stopped uh, stopped calling the the program. Uh, Selfish bastard, Will Durst. Well, yeah. <laughs> Not being able to feel the left side well, of your body might have something to do I with I finally, I talked to him the other day. I oh, actually, they did? Yeah, I, I did a video link up with him uh, on uh, FaceTime. And uh, because Debbie told me, you know, how to do it. Uh -huh. And uh, I rang it, and sure enough, he answered. And we talked for, I guess, about a half hour, something like that. Oh, okay. He's, That's good. He's got, you know, he speaks fine. Uh 
Huh? No problem speaking. Huh? Mind huh? sharp as a whip. Huh? Still as funny as ever. Sure. Just paralyzed. That's all. Okay. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the terrible part about it. I mean, yeah. it's amazing when your brain is willing to do it and your mind is willing to do it and your mouth is willing to do it. Exactly. The body kind of like a hooker with a stroke. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but the rest of uh, you won't do it. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it's weird. Oh, it's like Richard Pryor kind of was like that near the end. It yeah. Just, and, like, and you know, you, I really, you know, I love, of course, we all love Will. Sure. But, but I mean, that's really amazing. So uh, I, I just, you know, I have to, uh, I, I, it was so great to talk to him. That's and great. I'm gonna I'm gonna call him maybe every two or three days and just you know. Oh, that's cool. He's Give not. Yeah, point, so. he, he's not going anywhere except he does have physical therapy, four uh, days a week. So. Do what you do, so yeah. yeah, but you know, I mean, it just shows how fragile your talent is, and uh -huh. that's why I don't want you going out. You know, I'm saying you know you it's a very dangerous situation right now in Nevada. It wow, is. I didn't it, know that so far. Yeah, that. fifty. I can't be a hermit. I can't be another thing just starting to open that up. That means out of everybody they've tested, one out of every two people has had it. Uh huh. Yikes. That's a high infection rate. You know what our infection rate is here in New York? I think uh -huh. it's like one percent. One percent. Yo, you guys are in total lockdown for a long time. Uh, well, I mean, we we put ourselves into a voluntary lockdown, but that's why we took the curve. We took the thing and we just, uh -huh. you yeah. know, brought that's it good. down. It's crazy. I mean, it's going up a little bit, but that's expected during this time of the year. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, you know. I wear my I wear my annoying little mask wherever I go outside and uh, I still, you know, I got to I got to go to shows. I got to do a show tomorrow. I just I can't stay in the house anymore. I'm going crazy. I, I know, I know, I know it's called it's like called COVID. it's called COVID fatigue. Yeah. I have it. I'm right now I am exhausted and I just woke up. Yep, I, that's, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. The last two, three days, I just been tired. I didn't want to go anywhere. That's right. Uh, that's called yeah. COVID exhaustion. Right, like COVID but, fatigue. Uh, I got to get out there, and I got to start looking for places to live starting next week. So, oh wait, I got to get out there and see people. So, yeah. so what's happening in that great adventure? Great. Well, the car's taken care of. The cat's taken care of. Now it's a fine place to live. So I'm looking at low-income places for old guys like me because I'm an old guy. I'm a senior now. Give me an old place to get a couple more. But you don't have to move out immediately, right? Oh, I got a couple of months, so but uh, you know I'm going to start looking. I guess, well, months. a couple of months. I I thought you had a lease. Okay. I did have a well. It said it's a weird lease. It's a, it said for up to five years, and she wants to break it. And I can't really go into the legalities, but uh, I can get thirty to sixty days before I have to go anywhere. I got a thirty day notice, which I can turn to sixty days, and which I am doing with the help of legal aid. Thank you, legal aid. Amy, legal aid. And uh, I'll probably move, if, if I get a decent offer on a place, I'll move in November, if not, I'll move in November. What, what happens in, uh, in Nevada? I thought there was a, a um, uh, what do you call it, a, 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 a ban on evictions during COVID. I think that's for COVID people. I think people with it or something. I'm not sure. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I got, I, got, I got legal aid on my side. So, you know, I'm not worried. Just yeah. Saying. Yeah. But you're getting screwed. I'm getting screwed big time, but I can't, you know, me and the landlord are at odds. If she doesn't want me here, I won't stay here. But I'm going to stay as long as I can. So, you know. And, uh, so what, move, what do you tonight. have to do? Do you have to move in with the poor people? Uh, probably, yeah. Here we go. We're going to poor people. Janitor yeah. Acres. What, yeah. you're in a gated community now? This one, yeah, but it's, it's it's gates with guards on them. And being Jewish, I never felt comfortable around a gate with a guard near it. Where so, yeah. <laughs> are you going? Your papers, please. You will look like a mandel bound to me. So, uh, you know, I'd rather get a place with an electronic gate or a fence you can hop over. I don't care. Yeah. That's the place for me and my cats to flop down, you know. Yeah. And well, also, also, you had a uh, one eyed cat, right? I got one eyed, three cats, five eyes, count them five. Yeah. yeah he's, he's doing great, though. He doesn't even know he has one eye. He's, he's back to the, the attention hog he always was, tapping me and getting belly rubs and eating heartily and drinking lots of water he's, he's doing all right does he just is the eye missing is that what's gone i yeah, mean is it they still know where it was shut and the hair is they shaved where the hair was and it's starting to grow over it so it'll just be a little cute cat with one eye that's all yeah i had a cat go blind on me once oh yikes uh and you wouldn't know it you yeah, wouldn't they, know it 
they have a sense of smell you can't believe it anyway. So. Well, I mean, I think that cats actually see with a lot more than their eyes. You know. Yep. I mean, cut off their whiskers, they get stuck in a lot of places. Oh, oh yeah, you can't do that. Keep <laughs> <You going. know? laughs> but uh, uh, this cat went blind. Wow. And and we brought her out to California, and we got into this apartment where we had two levels in the apartment. You had to go upstairs and things like that. And this cat, the minute we, all the other cats went around sniffing around, figuring out where everything was. She was right up the stairs, going ah, places. Like she knew go. where everything was. Yeah, you know, smell that radar, that something. You know. So one eye. I mean, what's the worst that can happen to that cat? She can't watch 3D movies anymore. Yeah, that's all. There you go. It's no more 3D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like smell vision though. So yeah. Yeah, but they they adapt. They've got smell. They've got whiskers. They they it, it, all their they use all their senses. Oh, sure. And we find that hard to believe because we don't. Yeah, that's right. They're a lot sharper than And the most we use our senses is we say to our wife, did you fart? (laughs) You know, that's how we use our senses. Yep. That or looking at dwarf porn. Uh, uh, What? Looking at dwarf porn. Dwarf porn? Dwarf porn. Dwarf porn with dwarves. With dwarves. Oh, never mind. That's just my life. Oh, God. I don't want to. I was supposed to be private. Uh, I, I, I can I can I give you say something? I, I, I don't want, I shouldn't admit this. I for a short time had an obsession sexually with dwarf porn. Oh really? With, with with dwarf women. Oh my god. Uh, I I don't know why. I like they short women. I like short women. I just don't like them where their legs are shorter <laughs> than the rest of their body. You know. Oh yeah, they don't have to bend down to go up on you or whatever. But so I, I might say yeah, I was I, more into midget porn. There's a difference between a midget and a dwarf. Uh, Am I offending all those? What do they call them? Tiny. I think they like to be called little people. Little so, people, uh, little. Uh, which we don't see many of anymore. Because what happens when we see somebody becoming a midget? Uh, we use all kinds of foods and things like that, and their nutrition and so on, and we can bring them up to a height that's, you yeah. know, like maybe 5'4", five, four, something like that. Five, five, you know. four, yeah. Davy Jones height. Uh, we can't do anything about dwarfism, although we don't see that much anymore. Do you know the difference between a, a dwarf and a midget? About three inches, I don't know. No, no. Uh, a dwarf has a normal-sized torso uh-huh. and short legs. Uh-huh. And kind of shorter arms, but dwarf, excuse me, a midget, is proportional. Oh really? I yeah, that, he's proportional. I thought, I thought the little people had bigger heads or something. I no, don't know. for instance, I'm trying to think of in the movies, uh, uh, the guy who was in Freaks, uh, the, the, that was a midget. Ah, uh, okay. I can't remember his name now. Uh, but Johnny Poelo, do you remember Johnny Poelo? And the harmonic cats. And he used to look look it up on YouTube. They've got to have something with the harmonic cats. Uh, They um, uh, or the harmonica (laughs) rascals, I think, was another name they used. And Johnny Puello played a harmonica with them. But then he would come out, you know, and they'd play and be biting their legs and things like that. You know, (laughs) and so Johnny Puello was my favorite of the of the dwarfs. But you had. Uh You know, uh, J- uh, Jerry Marin, I think, was his name, who was in uh, The Wizard of Oz, you know, and so uh, on. So. There was little Johnny Eck from Freaks. There was like Johnny Marin. Eck. Yeah, well, yeah, he well, he didn't have a bottom half to his body. Yeah, it was just like the top, and I was it. He walked yeah, on his hands. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think he lived to be a, a ripe old age, too. Oh, yeah. He had, I think he had a normal twin brother, and they lived together until, like, they were in their 90s or something. So. Really? Yeah, from what I heard. I read in Ripley's Believe It or Not when I was young, so, yeah. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Old Johnny. Old Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. What other program would you tune into, folks, where two guys are talking about dwarfs and midgets? <laughs> yeah, Next but, week, join Albinos. Don't miss it. Uh, um, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, the guy who was on Fantasy Island. Oh, Hervé Villachez. Hervé, Hervé Villachez. He was, uh, he, 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 was a, he was a dwarf. Yeah. And very small, too, actually. Yeah. It's fucked up too. Yeah, and there's one that's really, really small. I'm trying to remember who he is now. They've been using him on several things. But anyway, you know. There's the mini me guy, but I think he, he's dead now. He, yeah, that's who I'm thinking of. Uh-huh. Yeah. He was a he was a dwarf as well. 
Yeah. So they'll, they'll give it a big part. Yeah. Big, yeah. The biggest, yeah. Biggest Herbe Velges was an artist as well in Paris. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. And a horny little motherfucker. <laughs> hey, we've, we've run out of our time this oh, time. Oh, but, but we shall have more time next week. Next week, more fun in color. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Pearl. Thank you. Thank you very much. Look, my head's the NBC TV guy. Blah, 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 blah. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Wow. Yes. Okay. There's Stephen Pearl. Okay. And tomorrow night, bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. We all love the bubs. Okay. Doing him uh, tomorrow at, uh, let me see here. At, uh, at uh, 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 let me see here. What time am I doing it? Uh, let me see here. Oh, I've got to look. I can't, I can't tell. I'm doing him tomorrow. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. I sent him a thing tomorrow. Yeah, so he'll be on tomorrow night. Da, 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 da. Okay, anyway, where are we? Uh, let me see here. Um, hope Pat, little Patrick isn't listening. This is from Candace Downey. I don't know what that means, Candace, to be honest with you. Okay, I'm just looking at some email. Do you mind if I check my email? Once in a while. So anyway, uh, it's uh, it's uh, Wednesday already. Uh, the countdown to the election is on our way. We still got uh, another how many weeks are going to go on this? Um, uh, two more weeks. Two more weeks. Uh, and then, well, a little less than two weeks. It's actually 13 days. And then... Hopefully, so our long national nightmare will be over. I can't think of any time in my lifetime <coughs> that I've seen people looking this forward to an election and hoping it's over and it ends in the right way. Anyway, we've got a bunch of people waiting to talk to us, so we'll just uh, we'll just go to that. And uh, 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 oh, hey, we got Roberts here tonight. Uh, let's see here, and we also have Brian Neary. Let me go to the let me actually go to the. Uh, hold on a second. I got to get rid of this. I hit the chat thing, and now how do I get rid of it? Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, now I hit this, and there's our panel so far. Oh, okay. There's uh, Jeff, and there's uh, Robert, and there's Brian, and there's Charlie. Mm -hmm. Are you guys all anxiously awaiting for the election? Yes. Let's get it over with. <laughs> Why don't yeah. we? I'd say, why don't we hold it today? But we kind of are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's just that we won't get the results till, well, who knows when we'll get the results. But uh, uh, it's, um, did you see where Lindsey Graham copped out of a debate? And where is it? Is it North, South Carolina he's from? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. And uh, he says, because tomorrow he has to vote on the, on the Supreme Court justice. Well, you know, you can have your debate get on a plane and be in Washington in time for the vote. Or I think because of the coronavirus, you are allowed to somehow send your vote in by remote. I don't think so in the Senate. That's true in the House. Mm -hmm. I think in the Senate, you have to be present. Really? <clears throat> oh, well, then, it, then that's a good excuse for him not to show up for that debate. He's, Lindsey Graham may lose. He may lose in South Carolina. Fingers uh, crossed. Uh, fingers crossed, Finally. yeah. And we sure would like to see the same thing happen to McConnell. Uh, but uh, I don't know if Moscow Mitch is going to be out, you know. He's in, that's Kentucky. That's a hard go down there. Mainly because they're all inbred down there. So, <laughs> you know, that's the problem. So uh, how are you tonight, Jeff? Good. Yeah, how's everything up in your neck of the woods, as they say? Well, the numbers in Connecticut are coming up. Yeah. Too many people getting sick. Yeah, we, we ours have gone up. Ours is at 1.4 statewide. Uh, I think, uh, it, and, and uh, you know, it's not terrible when you consider the rest of the country. But I was talking to, you know, I was talking to Stephen Pearl. And do you know, do you know what the, the infection rate is in Nevada? 
Shocking. 20, oh, excuse me, 59 percent. That means one out of every two people at least in Nevada has coronavirus. Jeez. All right? Um, well, that they're testing. Yeah, and I told well, him, I said, don't go out. Just play it safe. And he said, well, I like to go to the, I got to go to the gym. Just got to go to, I said, don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You know, if you think that COVID spreads fast in a closed room, like with six feet difference, Try a gym where people are huffing and puffing. That thing can go like 40 feet, you know? I our, said, our gym just opened, and they, they have every other mm -hmm. Stairmaster or whatever blocked off. And I was like, every other? I want like every two or three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, right. Yeah, absolutely every two or three. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's terrible. It's terrible. But it, here in New York, I mean, we're not complaining. I mean, we're still, we still are low. But we had like, uh, what did I see here? Let me look at uh, Cuomo's little encyclical from today. Uh, uh, in New York City, the positivity rate yesterday was 1.6%. Now, that includes those hot spots we've got, you know, like over in Brooklyn. Uh, Long Island, it was 1.6%. In the capital region, 0.8%. In central New York, 1.9%. In the Finger Lakes, 1.7%. Uh, Mid-Hudson region, 2.6%. Mohawk Valley, 0.5%. And it goes on and on and on. Um, but I'm looking at what, what's, the, uh, what's the current... Uh, he had a, a list here because he usually puts in who, how, many, how many people died. And uh, mm -hmm. we don't have it here. Updated original COVID data anytime online. Let's see here. Uh, here we go. Um, capital region, blah, 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 all of that. How many deaths, though, did we have? That's what I want to know. I guess I didn't have it there. It's something like nine people or something. But, it, you know, infections are going up. The amount of people mm -hmm. in going in the hospital are going up. It's not terrible, okay? But it's not good. And in Connecticut, what's happening? How's it going up there? More and more people getting sick. Yeah. Not tremendous numbers, but the wrong, the wrong way it's going. Listen, the way it's going here, I'll tell you, I go out, I'll tell you, I go out here in Harlem, and I would say 70% of the people aren't wearing masks. Oh, yeah. And I just want to yell at them. But, you know, I'll get myself <coughs> killed if I do, you know. Because, I mean, I, you see what happens to people who say, hey, you're not wearing a mask? Yeah, I get shot. Yeah, people are getting shot, and they're being, you know, it's terrible. And it's all over a mask. Come on. Hello, Tom Yamaguchi. I guess you're voting Ooh. for Biden-Harris, huh? <laughs> already have. Huh? Already have. Already have. My, uh, we can't vote until uh, Saturday. We'll be able yeah. to go out and vote. By the way, 1.2%. Uh, Actually, 1.22% here in Berkeley. In Berkeley is 1.2%? That's good. That's why we're going to catch y'all. Because California itself is much higher than that. Uh, I can't remember what it was. I had yes, I had it yesterday. I don't have it today. But I had a link to it yesterday. Uh, and, it, you know, but uh, we're, we're, we're third lowest in the country. We're third lowest in the country. The lowest is Maine. Yes, Robert. But uh, help me with this. The 1.22%, Tom, doesn't that mean 1.22% of those tested within a span of time? So oh, if yeah. that's, okay, so if that's the case, then the Nevada 59% doesn't mean 59% of the population is sick. No, it's 50 it means fifty nine percent of recent tests mm -hmm. have proven to be positive. Right, right. That's far different than saying fifty nine percent of the let's population. Say, let, let's is say you Ill. do. Let's say you do fifty thousand today. I think yesterday it was fifty. Right. It was fifty two percent. Okay, but let's say you do fifty thousand today. You do fifty thousand tomorrow. And now it's 59%. You can figure that probably in the overall population, that's got to be a good mean average. They're going by a three-day well, rolling average. 
and well, the three-day rolling average, they're still well over 50% in Nevada. Once again, statistics are funny things. Yeah. That could be based on 26 tests. Yeah. One you know thing, what I mean? It, it matters yeah. how many tests are you deriving you know how that many, percentage you know, from. New York, how many ours yeah. are based on yesterday? Yeah. 130,000 tests. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Tom. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm getting these <laughs> figures from the city of Berkeley's health department who had a uh, uh, town hall meeting on Monday night. Mm. And basically what they do is they have a goal of certain so many tests I per day. Yeah. To, make, to get what they believe to be an accurate count. And they're actually exceeding that goal by, I don't know, hundreds, hundred or something or so people. But right. uh, yeah, so 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 how many tests they actually do, the more tests they do, the more accurate that number is going to be. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. More accurate. Exactly. Not like Trump says. <laughs> he says you know, but but the more you test, that, the more you're positive. <laughs> But right. beyond that, there's some. There's another factor that can make these figures not comparable. In certain states, you can't get a test mm -hmm. unless you're at a certain age or higher, or show <laughs> symptoms, or have been exposed to someone. So therefore, in Texas, if if the rule is you can only get a test if you're over 65, or your doctor writes a script. But in, say, Kansas, anybody can walk in and get a test, then those percentages are not comparable because right. you're starting off from okay. different. But let's just say, let's just say the Nevada, let's cut it in half. Okay? Just to be on the safe side, cut it in half. Still isn't good. It's about that's about 30%. Okay. Oh, it's not good news, but I'm not ready to jump off. A cliff and say yeah, that but, half of Nevada's but, population. But was I wrong going. to tell Stephen Pearl don't go to the gym? No, absolutely you know? not. No, absolutely no. not. You know, I already got one one of our guests on the show down and out because of illness. Uh, I don't need more. Oh, absolutely. Now, on the other hand, Kravitz mm -hmm. moved to Massachusetts. It's it's the second lowest in the country. Mm -hmm. Massachusetts. And of course, Maine has got like what 0.6 percent, something like that. They're only lobster Two fishermen. Years. Yeah, only lobster fishermen. You know, <laughs> uh, but uh, that's uh, that's something. It's something. I mean, but here's it, what here's what I think is alarming. Okay. Um, Nate Silver, beyond predicting elections and so on, mm -hmm. also did uh, his people did a study and what they figured out which i thought was ingenious mm -hmm. was they figured out instead of just looking at the covid death number mm -hmm. which may or may not be accurate mm -hmm. <clears throat> let's look at the total number of deaths across the country year over year in other words in 2019 how many people died period and then in 2020 how many people have died period Mm -hmm. And what they noticed was that there was an increase in the number of death certificates nationwide, upwards of 20%. Then it stands to reason to him and certainly to me that the number of COVID deaths is more than likely being underreported. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and that's, yeah, I, I agree with that. That's exactly what, Alex was talking about before about his neighbor, you know, s s saying that people could be dying in a result of COVID because they can't get the attention. I heard there was a cancer, there's a cancer patient that died because the same thing. They couldn't get in to see their doctor as a regular timing that they would be, and they could have been able to, you know, right. uh, you know, fix this or not fix it, but you know, had treatment for this person, but right. they they passed because they were so busy with COVID. So I, I agree with that. Yeah. All of a sudden, we've been stuck with the hideous wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but Nevada, that Nevada number is scary if they're testing all the strippers. He, he, yeah, all yeah, the lap, yeah, the COVID <laughs> the strip clubs. <laughs> if, you're, if your lap uh, develops a cough. Yeah. Uh, it's, Check your temperature first before you get this lap dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. 
So, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a scary prospect, the whole thing, you know. I mean, it's just, it, it's just that we could have done something here. You know, you look at somebody like, uh, they, uh, somebody mentioned today that South Korea uh, stopped travel from China the same day that we did. And yeah. they, percentage-wise, the population, have far less cases because they also closed everything down in their country. Yep. And they took the steps that were needed. And everybody wore masks. And everybody wore masks. Well, you know, in your in, uh, in Asian countries, it's very common for people to wear masks. Most of the time, if they have a cold or they're sick, they wear a mask. That's considered the proper thing to do. So they're very used to wearing masks. Here, we've turned it into a political issue, yeah. which is just boggles the mind. Uh, I'm not. I'm not wearing them because uh, I eat healthy. I'm not going to get it. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. But they rent, rent scooters all day too, and they have the mask on there because of all the dust and everything. But, Fumes. Yeah. yeah. I've been been there several times and constantly. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, uh, um, okay, I understand it. If you're um, if you're walking down the street and there's nobody a block from you or a block in back of you, you know. And you don't have your mask on for a moment because you want to breathe a little better. Okay, I'll, I understand that. That makes sense, you know. But uh, when you see me coming, hey, put it up. But everybody's wearing them like they like they're chin straps, yeah. you know. And see I'm going again. like especially they don't cover their nose. And I'm going. I would rather you cover your nose than your mouth. But I go past them and I do this. I actually put my hand over my mask. Number one to say "fuck you," and second, and none of them react. None of them really care. Okay, a couple you have. Need to, you huh? need to go like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go like this. Yeah, uh, and then I took to not wearing my dark glasses out there, so I could look them in the eye when I was doing it. You know, and it's still no. They, they could care less. I mean, and why? And and then some of these people like really fat. You know, and I'm going, don't you think maybe uh, if you got it, you got a worse chance of di getting a bad case of it than some of the thinner, uh, us thinner guys? While I'm not the thinnest in the world, I think I don't. Do I fall into the obese category? I don't think so. I don't know. I'm See, six four. We, I'm six look, four. And all those charts say I'm supposed to be 200 pounds. Am, yeah. I, am, I, obese? am I obese? Yeah. No, no. You look. You don't look fat in those jeans. <laughs> <laughs> the great hour hourglass look. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm wearing my shorts tonight. I could do a Jeffrey Tubin if you want me to. Oh <laughs> no, no, no. But see, we've talked about this before on the show. It comes down to messaging. You know, drunk driving only changed when the national perspective on it changed, the messaging made it yeah. something that was anti-social to do. Yeah. Smoking was yeah. accepted for years until the messaging changed. And now smoking is considered a, a sort of taboo almost. Well, my son has spent every single day since January in China and he's the first to tell you that if you walk down the street on any street in China without a mask, you get public derision. You're immediately criticized, ostracized, shouted at, and that's accepted. So the messaging has gotten across and people have now accepted that as the norm. Well, years ago, years ago, I interviewed Ashley Montague, who was a world famous anthropologist who had written a book called The Elephant Man. It was all about the elephant man situation in England and the history of the guy. And I had him on for that. And so we were discussing that. And he said that, you know, he became a very uh, popular guest to have it very fancy parties, even though he was this hideous human being, because uh, he was very intelligent and they loved talking to him. And it was, it, so what, what we got, the discussion we got into is what dictates fashion? And he said, fashion is always dictated by royalty. And in this case, it's not royalty, it's the people who run the country. Excuse me, I got a hair sticking out of my nose. And I, Driving me crazy. Um, 
And and he said so if if uh, and he said that has kind of even moved over to to rock stars being kind of our royalty. So if uh, if if our if our rock stars wear a certain kind of outfit of clothing and so on, other people wear it, right? And but he said it, it also has to do with the people who are like the president and the vice president and so yeah. on. So if if the president only did some did nothing else, nothing else was as absent to the table as he has been, but he wore a mask every time you saw him. He would have saved tens of thousands of lives, yep. and uh, that's what I hold against him. It's just the selfishness, you know, of of just caring about yourself. Oh, I don't look good with a mask. Well, nobody looks good with a mask. I don't like walking with a mask. Nobody likes walking with a mask. But if we're going to stop this thing, then we all have to do our part. Yeah. Did you uh, see the uh, interview with uh, Fauci on 60 Minutes? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I thought his response regarding Trump's refusal to wear a mask was was spot on. Actually, yeah. he considers it a sign of weakness. He's yeah. very, very, he's very, very obsessed with his masculinity. Now, at, well, he probably should be. He has a very small penis, according to Stormy Daniels. <laughs> you know, but my question is, my question is, um, what what did uh, Trump do the next day after 60 Minutes to Fauci? You know, he couldn't just shut up and not say anything. Mm -hmm. No. And he called him all kinds of names and said, but he's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that took the sting out of it. Yeah. You know. I, I don't, I, you know, I mean, uh, again, I don't want to sit here holding a, a hatchet party for Trump because I think the big hatchet day is going to be the election. I think he is going to get whooped so badly that he's going to, he, he's going to leave, he'll leave the country, you know. You know, I was going to say, the, oh, sorry. I was going to, I don't know if, I was going to ask you, Tom and Alex and everybody, this. Like the other day when Trump was in Michigan, right? The way the crowd was cheering Locker up and his arrogance, he just had a death threat against him. When is he going to be held accountable for his words? Yeah. Well, he's not going to be. He, because he's got a whole bunch of Republicans who have done nothing to call him to account for any of this. Alex, what do you think would happen if this woman got assassinated? God forbid. I wonder what he would say. What he would just laugh it up. What did I do? It's like well, he he go. What did I do? I didn't do anything. Yeah, he would definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a bizarre world, really. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. If this guy took a bullet tonight, you'd have a party on Fifth Avenue. I'll tell you, I was talking to Shecky uh, today, and uh, we, we mentioned you, Tony, and he mm -hmm. told me that Tony has sold, what, for $200 Trump yeah. comic books? Yeah, these idiots. I hate to say it. I make money off the this idiot. I'm <laughs> uh, eating good this week. The groceries are paid for the Trump comic book. She don't know, but no, I actually sold it for 160 bucks A piece? Yeah, one book. One book. I got 160 bucks. Yeah, which one of us? Them. Which one of us isn't the stupid one in this group? I laugh when I pack it up, Alex. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I only send it to him. I don't mean it because I'm, I'm like, I, I tell him because he's got to get a laugh. I'm, I'm putting this in the box and I'm saying to myself, "What idiot would want this book?" Wait a minute. <laughs> not only 160 bucks for a Trump yeah. comic book, which eventually <laughs> will probably be worth nothing. Okay, but wait a minute. It might yeah. not be worth 160. Let me put it oh, that way. It. But on and top so of that, it's got to be in mint condition, so they're never going to take it out of its sleeve. No, they're not. They can keep it in there, frame it on your wall. So that they're not going to read it either. I'm being honest. It's not going to gain. I could be. Alex, I got like six more copies downstairs that I cost two dollars a piece. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being real. So I got to look at it pretty good so that I know which one to send in without blemishes, and I'll get another. Neiman Plus, and I can sell it for another. Hold million on, bucks. hold on a couple of weeks. If he loses, I think it'll be yeah, worth I, more I, for I, a couple of days. You know, Alex, I'm telling you, I don't mean I'm not trying to be bravado or anything because I you know I love comics. But you're right about something you said. Political people in, in comics, they're on. Like I talked to one of these old comic guys in his seventies. He says, "Tony, so you don't realize anything political 
sells. He's right. This guy's as really as anything. And the older it is, if you have something on Nixon in good condition and you graded it, you you would you couldn't even put a price on it. He said, "You probably get a couple hundred bucks." It all depends what it is. Wow. Yeah, it's like it's. But what bothers me is I'm watching that speech with Trump, and I'm like, I can't even. Believe, my mother doesn't even know what's going on. She says, "Why is he talking like this?" It's almost like what he knows what he's doing, Tom. He does this. I'm telling you, Alex, I don't want to see him get killed until no. after the election. Tony, <laughs> <laughs> really, Tony, we want him to, we want him to, to go uh, on trial. We, we want, want him, him, yeah, want him alive this guy. To, to go to, to, to get arrested and go on trial. I mean, I don't want, I don't wish harm on anybody, but he's sitting there. I'm like, I'm watching this like. They can't lock her well, he's put he, 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 right about he, a week ago. You know, I don't. I don't think you should wish. I don't think you should wish terrible things on anybody. No. Oh. Uh, I, you know, you want to be nice about it. But then, when I think of how many people died yeah. because of his, yeah, complete yeah. lack of of doing anything about COVID, and when I think about the, you know, the the governor of Michigan and how she almost got kidnapped and things like that, I'm going. You know, whatever happens to me right. deserves. You know, like when he got COVID, yeah, yeah. I went, I'm sorry he's got COVID, but he was asking for it. Yeah. And and I'm mm-hmm. beginning to go along mm-hmm. with Charlie. I don't think he had COVID. I think Charlie's right. I don't buy it, out. I think it was all the fucking... Because he got over it too fast. Am I... Yeah. Uh, uh, Brian, yeah. you're in oh. this business where you make these little... He makes these little things. These are the testing units for COVID. Okay. That's what it is? Yes. Yeah, that's I what think he recovered very fast. Huh? Yeah. He, I think he uh, uh, what you, fast. Of what you know about COVID, and you're not a big scientist, you know, because you didn't, I don't think you invented this thing. Your company invented it, and, you know, you invented the machines that they go into and so on. Um, but the point is, from what you know of COVID, do you get over it that fast? Even if you've got all this medicine pumped into you, and they, by the way, they say that the rem, uh, the uh, remdesivir does not work on somebody who doesn't have a bad case of it. And the other thing that uh, anti the uh, um, the uh, what was it? I can't remember the other drug they. Put I was going to tell you. They say it probably do doesn't work either. I mean, mm-hmm. these things didn't suddenly make him go in on a, what was it, a Thursday and come out on a Monday saying, look at yeah. me, I'm fine. I'm, I t- Alex, my cousin oh. Joy had COVID in July. We called her via the Alexa, you know, we couldn't go out there to see yeah. her. She told me she couldn't get off that couch for seven days. Okay. And she was, yeah. and well, she was home. They didn't even admit her. It was a miracle. What were we going to Robert, you were going to say something? We lost. We've lost three people to the virus, and one person we didn't lose is my best friend since we were young children. And he got the virus, and it was eight weeks where he couldn't get up. Eight weeks, Tony. And he actually at one point called me on the phone to essentially say goodbye because he had kind of made he, peace he, with himself that he was ready to go. Was he in the hospital? Was, no. His no. doctor was adamant. This was back early on mm-hmm. when they were just starting to figure out that going to the hospital and being put on a respirator wasn't necessarily a bargain. You know, that it was actually uh, doing more as much harm as good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so his doctor was adamant about there's nothing we can do for you here except expose you to other, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so his doctor insisted that he stay home. But for eight mm-hmm. weeks, he was deathly ill. Tom, you wanted to say something? Yeah. Well, one thing, uh, you know, the, actually, I thought I heard uh, Fauci say that the Redevs, or whatever you pronounce it, uh, is actually they're discovering that you can give it to people earlier and it does make a difference. And so, and Trump was pumped with a bunch of drugs that are just not available to to to, to anybody else because they're uh, experimental. But so I yeah. believe I believe he actually does did have COVID. Uh, Melania supposedly she canceled out of a of a campaign appearance because she still has a cough. So there's a lot of things that we're mm-hmm. we're still trying to figure out. It just doesn't. It's it. It's affecting people so many different ways, and 
it's sort of like like the roll of the dice in a way. You can't really you know, predict. Rather than use mm -hmm. that situation as an object lesson to America, hey, I, I, I thought it was no big deal, but now I've had it. I realize that we've got to really be careful about this thing. That wasn't the message he came out with. The message he came out with was, look, I survived it, so can you. Yeah, like Boris Johnson. I mean, he he was like, to, hey, this really changed my mind about 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 uh, COVID, and he really changed his tune. But but, well, but he was in there for three. He was in there for three weeks. You know, yeah. Yeah. Trump came out of that it's saying, just, it's don't, just, "Don't worry about the disease. Don't let something like this run your life." I just the reason I'm suspicious, like Charlie. Mm -hmm is that it was so little time spent getting it. And I've heard from everybody that even if you get a mild case of it, it lingers for months. There are people to this day who got it three months ago. Some of them, some of them develop other problems, like they can't walk very well or things like that, you know, yet they're not, they don't have the lung problems anymore, but it's, it's manifested itself in a lot of other ways. And... Uh, you know, I just find it. I agree with uh, Charlie. There, I have some doubt that he actually had it. You know, but Melania well, and the son had it. So, and Chris Christie. I mean, yeah. he uh, he's recovered even though of, of his obesity. Yeah, but um, but to his credit, to, to his credit, what's he saying about it? Oh I, yeah, he wasn't kidding. I, he, he said I was stupid. I I I, I assumed uh, I couldn't get it. And I got it, and don't you be that way, and, uh, you know, I'm just happy I'm still here. You know, that's that's how the president should have handled it. It should have been a message to the rest of the country. Go get tested, wear a mask, do all of that. But no, he couldn't say that because that would make him wrong. Weak. My mother. And weak. And weak. Yeah. And weak. weak. Yeah. The yeah. governor of New Jersey is self-quarantined right yeah, now. Heard, uh, yes, yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. One of his people around him. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, it's, it's just, uh, I just, I just think that, again, you know, uh, the country would have changed their attitude about masks if the president had made a big yep. deal about wearing them. He said, I'm wearing them. I mean, uh, Biden's doing a very nice job of saying, hey, I wear a mask. You know, I've seen him give speeches with the mask on, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and and of course, Trump makes fun of him. Oh, he's got a mask so big. It could, what? Fuck you. you he's, know? A, he's a punk, Alex. I don't like him. Oh, oh, he, and then and then he's, he's now referring to um, um, Biden and the family as a syndicated crime family. <laughs> now, now, if anybody, if anybody is sin is is organized crime it's donald fucking trump <laughs> well that's his pattern isn't it is to always accuse others of his own failings and his own faults you know right, it, right. it really is right yeah yeah if, if he says something you can pretty well figure he knows it's his it's Oh, yes. I don't know if you heard, Alex, did you hear Barack's uh, speech today? You know what he said? Yeah. I paid more in taxes working at an ice cream shop when I was yeah. a kid. Baskin <laughs> Robbins. Yes, Robbins. Last year in taxes. Than he did. And his best line of the night that was, one, though, <laughs> is that it's come out that Donald Trump probably has bank accounts in China. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's come but that's, out. But that's and not... he mentioned that. And he said, can you imagine... How Fox would have handled that if I had a bank account while I was president <laughs> in China? They would have called He's me right. Beijing Barry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Yes. Yes. more in taxes to China than he did to the U.S. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. really? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Beijing Barry. I thought that was just the funniest mm -hmm. line I've ever heard. He's wondered. He was. You know, I watch. I got to get rid of this hair. God, it's funny. stuck in me. Oh, there we go. Oh. You, they, you, when you get a hair and it, it's at and you can't wear a mask. You, you know, you're right. That right, hold it in. Anyway, um, um, <laughs> as I watched him speak, I just went, you know, he wasn't the greatest president we ever had. He learned his job. He got better and better as he went on. You know, I think he was a, a pretty good president in his second term. First term, ah, eh, still learning how it goes. But he did. Take, you know, we had a lot of money problems in this country at the time, and he, he tampered those down. So 
tamp those down with the help of Biden. Mm -hmm. And but as I watched him, I just went, God, I wish we had something like that in the White House right now. Just the dignity, you know, the 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 decency of the family that inhabited that house. And, you know, the family was such a nice family. And I just I I just said, I miss him. You know, yeah. I, I miss the fact that I felt like well, every time I watch Trump in the White House, I feel I have to go take a shower. Yeah. You know, fine. Yeah. And and with uh, with with Obama, I, I just felt that we were we. It's a, it's a question of honoring the job you have, you know. And I don't think it? yes, uh, John Larkin, Mr. Haney. Trump makes me miss uh, Nixon. <laughs> yeah, I know. Think it over. But, well, you know, I I've often said that compared to Trump, I begin to go well. You know, George Bush Jr. wasn't that bad. In yeah. fact, Daddy Bush wasn't that bad. In fact, Reagan wasn't that bad. That's Come to fun. think of it, neither was Nixon. In <laughs> fact, Hitler wasn't that bad. <laughs> no, Hitler was that bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I draw the line. <clears throat> you draw the line at Hitler? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Okay. But, you know. But he has lowered the bar for Biden. Like, in a way... It's almost like uh, the team had a tyrannical head coach. Mm -hmm. And so now anybody that follows him is suddenly considered a player's coach and communicates and so on and so forth. So Biden has a pretty low bar. Just don't fuck up, you know, <laughs> and people will see it as an improvement. Well, I mean, uh, the fact of the matter is that um, uh, <laughs> with, where Biden is concerned, all he has to do to win this election is just stay out of the way don't you know, and, and don't 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 screw up at all and I, I I think he could actually screw up a little bit and not have a have a big problem going for him you know I I think this is when I look at the at the um, polls and so on uh, and I think this year, they're a little more accurate because nobody wants to make the same mistake again. And so they realize what went wrong last time in the polling. And by the way, the polling wasn't wrong last time. I mean, no, the wasn't. polling said that uh, the Hillary was go it was going to win the win the vote, and she did by three million votes. But it was the whole game with the electoral college that got Trump to be president. Um, Seventy thousand votes. Yeah. So you know. Uh, I don't think the pollsters want to make that kind of mistake again, and neither do the people prognosticating the election. So they're, they're looking at the whole picture. And every indication is, I was looking at Nate Silver today, it's what, 83 to 1? 87. 87 wow. to 1 that, he, that Biden's going to no, win? No, 87%. In other words, he runs 40,000 election simulations mm -hmm. and in 80 per 87 percent of those biden wins wow wow i think i think are... uh fox just came out with a, a michigan <clears throat> plan showing uh showing biden winning by 12 yeah 12 that's, in, in that's michigan. lights out Ooh. game over well uh, when when fox comes out with a poll like that you got to take it to the bank yeah you know you got to take it to the bank. Well, you know what the other symptom is, is when you see John Cornyn of Texas yep. suddenly start the fucking mambo to try to act like, I don't know the guy that well. I don't support him all the time. Yeah. You're going to hear more and more of this. In fact, it's kind of late in the game. Oh, well, I'm, I'm telling you right now, as soon as that election is over and Trump loses. Oh, yeah. If he loses by a huge margin, okay. The, the f speed with which those senators are going to be running for the exits and saying, well, I didn't like him anyway. And I, uh, yeah. I you know, I wasn't for him when he was running, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> they, they have like done his, his complete and utter bidding. They should be ashamed of them. I'd be ashamed of any Democrat who did that to somebody like that. You know, I That's mean, why I, love, I love the Lincoln project right now. They, they have the, the, the new ad now. And they keep, you know, McSally and all these, they keep flashing those names. Yeah. They're into everybody's mind. This oh, is not yeah. just about Trump. Yeah. This is not just about Trump. 
we got to remember all these people that were supporting him, all these people that were backing him before. Well, McSally, which is what is in uh, Arizona, Arizona. Uh, uh, she's doing very badly. To begin yeah. with, she He's never just... she never ran for the office till now. She was yeah. handed it by the Republican governor of the state of uh, of uh, Arizona. Uh, and uh, she ran against Cinema and lost. And she lost. Did cinema. she run against Cinema? Yep. And yeah. she lost. Yeah. yeah. And she lost for what? What was that for? Senate. Oh, Senate, Senate. originally. No, yeah, for the then other... after she lost the yeah. Cinema, the governor appointed her for right. McCain seat. I McCain see. In other died. words, she lost to uh, to Cinema, who became a senator. Yeah. And then she. Was, was appointed when and when McCain, McCain died, died. She was appointed. Okay. Yeah. In any event, she's up against uh, what's his name? Uh, this uh, Kelly. The Mark, Ke Mark Kelly. Mark Kelly. Mark Kelly. Mark Kelly, who is a very likable. Okay. Second, right. the husband of Gabby Giffords, who yeah, in right. Arizona yeah. is like considered gold. All right. Yeah. Why they don't run her again, I have no idea. And finally, he's an astronaut. He's an American hero. Yep. Yep. You can't yep. beat that. McSally hasn't got a chance. Space station. Yeah, yeah. What? He was on a space station. Oh, I thought you said he was on a PlayStation. Uh, <laughs> Robert. You know, there's a quirk about that particular election. In most cases, the elected official doesn't take office until the new Congress sits. But in the case of Arizona, he takes office almost immediately because by Arizona law, that seat is being yeah. held by an interim as opposed to yeah. an elected official. Right. So when, ev when everybody was saying that a vote in the Senate could be like four, they needed four Republicans. If it were delayed to late November, it would be three Republicans because Kelly would ostensibly take office. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, That's yes, very good. Take, it would take office immediately. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Tom. And by the way, uh, tonight, uh, before getting on to Zoom with you, I was actually calling uh, Arizona uh, for the Biden and Kelly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. And so, yeah. So, so I'm just telling all of you, I mean, plan on doing something more than just voting because mm -hmm. we just can't take this for granted. No. If you could do anything, any kind of volunteer work, voting, texting, postcards, whatever, please do it. We, we need a big, big, big legacy. So we we see, I think we're going to win. Okay. What, what is no, that? I'm not going to take it for granted. What is that oh. you're holding up there, Brian? I think, oh, there I, go. I think COVID now, nobody's talking about my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> That's for Charlie. Uh, yeah. Um, I just think that, um, you know, the, the, we're going to win. I think we're going to win big. I think we're going to get the Senate. I think we're going to keep the House, of course. And we're going to get the White House. It, it's going to be the Republicans' worst nightmare. The next four years, if Biden says, let's make farts legal, they'd pass it in Congress and the Senate. Okay? I mean, it, it's going to be, he's going to literally have a blank check. Uh, but we, I want it to be not just a win. I want it to be a rout. I want this man yep. whose ego is huge to suffer in the worst, the, 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 what is it? The, uh, death by a thousand cuts yep. yeah, that this yeah. would amount yep. to if he really, really lost. I mean, if, if Biden got like 400 electoral votes and, and, Trump got 160 or whatever, you know, I, I can't do the math right now, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, because that's what I want. That's my desire. That's my let's get even. My wife and I don't walk past the television when we see Joe Biden without doing a genuflection and saying, kick his ass, Joe. Yeah. And, kick his ass. And my question is now, I, I would take it everybody here is going to vote for Joe Biden. Or has voted for Joe Biden already. already. Done. How many are voting for him enthusiastically, and how many are voting for him because you don't want Trump to get back in? Yes, Tom. I would say <clears throat> that 
in the primary, Joe Biden was not the top of my list okay. of preferred candidates. Me too. Yeah. But he was far from the bottom. Me too. And actually, as things have turned out, I have become enthusiastic for Joe Biden. Me too. I really like him. I'm really glad he got the nomination. I think he actually is the best person this time to to, you know, replace well, the, the, the worst president in definitely in my lifetime, if not in, in history. He is the man that I believe will will actually do what needs to be done to, 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 to heal the country. You agree with that, Robert? I do wholeheartedly. And I think to take Tom's point and go further, I've been saying all along what I'm looking forward to is that Joe can very easily surround himself with outstanding people, remnants of the Obama administration, other liberal or democratic thinkers that are out there on the shelf and have been for a while. And Joe can almost sort of manage from, you know, like from the sidelines, be the head coach, so to speak, and have people in places where, I mean, stop and think about goddamn Trump's cabinet and all the people that are misplaced and ill-prepared to do the jobs they're doing. Well, also, how many of them, how, also, Robert, how many of them are permanently there or were just appointed as temporary? Temp they're yeah, temporary. acting. Well, they're, most of them are temporary. I mean, acting. The, the, new, well, the new administration can come in and clean out anybody that they want. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. for sure they'll get rid of, you know, uh, Pompeo I don't and, think I don't think there's anybody in Trump's cabinet who is going to be there no, when no, Biden becomes no. president. They, oh, no way. They no should way. start packing real they soon. Got, I, Barr will be gone. Pompeo's gone. That that rat Ratcliffe guy, he's gone. All those scumbags are gone. And all the choices that Biden has, because we hopefully oh, will have the Senate as well, will just get passed without question. Yeah. And yeah. the point is that Biden is the kind of person, unlike Trump, who will rule and say, I'm going to take the advice of other people. He'll in delegate. other words, well, he yeah. realizes having been in that position before. In fact, uh, 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 Obama has said this before, and he said it today. He said, after I had to make a decision, the last person in the room was Joe Biden, and I wanted his opinion, too. I, we want a president who wants the opinion of other people. Nobody who becomes president knows everything about, you know, economics and the military and the this and the that. You bring people in to do that job. You're, you're, you know, and what you are is you're the CEO. You're, you're chairing the meeting, as Abraham it were. Abraham Lincoln, who used to say, if you agree with me always, why do I need you? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. But that's not the way Trump works. Trump no. doesn't like anybody who disagrees with him. And that's why everybody's been afraid to disagree with him. I mean, even even Fauci tries to be nice about it, you know, um, uh, uh, as though he, he figures maybe if I don't really get nasty about this, that maybe I can get him to come over to some things. He might change his mind on this or his mind on that, but if I get nasty with him, then he, I, I've lost him. Uh, so I think everybody's afraid of getting Trump mad because Trump will then get very obstinate and go, no, we're not going to do that. Okay. I, I think he, that's his, part of his nature. Yeah. As a scientist and a doctor. Yeah. And, and a guy who... He's very well to work with a lot of different people. Well, no, but, but Fauci is the kind of guy who who really just wants to solve the problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if if getting nasty towards Trump and the way he does things and not playing him politically is going to get him and uh, get Trump uh, not on his side, then um, he's he probably feels he's not doing his job. You know, so I mean, a lot, and I, but I think a lot of people, I think Trump has run this country by uh, just, you know, being the person that everybody's afraid to say no to. Wow, that's a great way to run a country, isn't it? Yeah. You know? I was worried that a war, big war was going to happen, and then we'd have this guy as president and he wouldn't know what to do. 
I didn't realize that the real war was going to be against the disease. Yeah. And really, that's been the worst enemy we've ever had. Already, it's killed more people than died in Vietnam. Yeah. You know, and it's World War II. no World War II. We it was two, uh, yeah. f about a half a million. Yeah. Oh, okay. Half a million. Yeah, but you know, the pandemic, the pandemic also brought out the worst in him. You know, the best or worst, whatever you want to say, but it really showed more people. How just bad and not a leader he is, and how he listens to himself and nobody else. If it wasn't for COVID, I mean, we'd be you know cruising along here still, and he'd be saying he's breaking records. I don't think he would have gotten reelected, even without COVID. He would, you know, he'd be running on you know how great the economy is, but he but he'd still be stupid, and he'd be saying, "Oh, I want to lock up you know uh, Biden," and you know people aren't buying that shit any well, longer. I am, are that. yeah, I asked earlier about Biden and about. You know how many of you were, were, you know, are voting for him enthusiastically? Mm -hmm. And as for myself, I'm not voting for him enthusiastically, but I'm more enthusiastic about him than I was when he first started running. I mean, I was always going to vote for him because, what? I'm not. I don't want Trump in for another four years. Come on. So I was going to vote for him. That that's not the problem. The problem was to vote for him and feel good about doing it. And I think I feel good about doing it now. I think what we've seen, at least presented to us, whether if he's faking it, then God bless him, you know, you know. But I don't think he is. Uh, a, a guy who seems empathetic, a guy who seems to touch the common man in this country. He's more of the common man kind of person. And I think that he's a good influence on the country, you know. And Trump is a bad influence. I wouldn't. Would you? Yeah. Any of you? If you had a child today, would you? No. Any of you want no. to say to that child, no. "Be more no. like the president," no. you no. know? Nope. No. Yeah. You know. I mean, what? I had, do you... a, I had a teacher in high school who who once said to me, "Never go out with a girl who hasn't had her heart broken." And in in Joe Biden's case, you know, it rings true. He's had his heart broken and he understands pain. He understands, you know, mm. grief. He understands suffering. Yeah. He comes from, you know, humble roots. He understands the average American person. And boy, will that be refreshing. You know, it really will. Yeah, well, I, I, I think the reason he decided to run, because he didn't want to run. And the reason he decided to run is he just couldn't take what he saw. Yeah, Charlottesville. Huh? He said Charlottesville. Charlottesville. Yeah, Charlottesville was what yeah. did it for yeah. him. When he saw yeah. that, when he saw that, he says he can't just sit there and let this happen again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, yeah, now, uh, let's see here. Adrian, your little daughter, the one who we've taken on as our uh, poster child for the show. Today is her. Today is her birthday. Oh really? Oh, oh wow! Five years old. Five years old. Yeah, she's she... had cake, so she's not going to bed anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. In fact, maybe if she's here at the, the door. at the end of the show, you'll probably have to hold her down. Yeah. She uh, thought her birthday, she could be on the show all night. I said, no, no, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> you could all say that. Does she have any concept about the president and about an election? No, no, out? no, no. But, but the two, the other two do, you know, so 12 and 14. And I'm trying to explain to these guys, this is not a president, you know? And, and then when Obama, remember Obama spoke like a couple months ago, the first time he sort of came out and had that speech yeah. and I yanked them. I said, get over here. And I said, listen to this guy. And then they listened to Obama. I said, that's how a president should really be, you know, but trying, trying to explain the stuff and mm -hmm. then not, then not thinking I'm just a crazy man thinking some crazy president, but Trying to make this, them understand some stuff. How so, they feel when they? How, how, how do they feel when they saw Obama? Oh, uh, they 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 just smiled. You know, they understood. Um, but you know, it, it's just overwhelming all this stuff from Trump. So it's amazing the shade that Trump has thrown on Obama during the last four years. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just amazing because the, the this. This was a principled, decent person. Now, you may not have liked what he did as president. You could say, oh, he threw the country to the wolves or whatever. Sure. But he, he goes after him in another way. Like He hates Obama. He just he hates, hates him. Yeah. And it all goes back to that correspondence dinner. That That's where he learned not to like him. 
Uh, I know Trump's just a racist. He doesn't like black people, and you know, yeah. I mean, I, and he doesn't he, like women either. Yeah. Nope. You know, he's cry you know what he's griping about now? What woman he's going after now? Leslie Stoll. No. Oh, yeah. oh well that that we I can hardly wait. <laughs> I can hardly wait for Sunday to see that one where yeah. he walks off sixty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> no. The one he's going after right now, Kristen Welker. Kristen. Who's oh, going yeah. to be the, the the moderator on the debate. Yeah. Oh, now yeah. I gotta tell you, number one. Uh, I she's in my spank bank. Okay, she's she's um, she's, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's a, smart too. She's she's a, she's a hot little number, and yes, yeah, she's smart. That's the thing that really turns me on, yeah. and she's a good reporter, you know. And yeah. I don't know where she is politically. Trump claims she's a liberal, so she's a liberal. She'll I know she'll be more than fair, but to go after this woman before you have even held the debate, what you're trying to do is to try and say, see, she, I told you she was going to go after me, blah, 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 blah. You He's know. working the refs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Below the belt. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, don't go after Kristen Welker. You're going after my babe, you know. So, so let's keep score for this weekend. He's gone after, just this weekend until now, he's gone after Leslie Stoll, mm -hmm. Kristen Welker. All women Dr. so far. Dr. Fauci, yeah. the scientists are idiots. Let's lock up Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. Let's also criticize his own AG who won't go after those people. Yeah, he may fire him again. He told everyone that we're rounding the corner where it came to the virus. I could go on. It yeah. came to the point where yesterday it all came up in my throat. <laughs> and I began to think the following. I knew people who supported Romney, and we would have good conversations about that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't agree with them, but I understood. There were people I know that supported John McCain. I didn't agree with them, but I had nothing but admiration for John McCain as an American yes, patriot. Yes. Where yeah. it comes to Trump, I am prepared to say, if you support this man, I seriously think you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself if you are a true American. Period. He has no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I came in late. Have we talked about um, America's mayor yet? <laughs> oh, oh, Rudy Giuliani. This is a funny story. It's another thing I'm looking forward to. This time on on Friday, if you have Netflix, um, Sasha Baron Cohen has done a new Borat film, and in it, he puts. Rudy Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani. I think what we could call, we could we call it a compromising situation. I would say so. <laughs> what happens is he has this woman who's daughter. working with him on the show, and she says she wants to interview Giuliani. So they go to her hotel room, and they put the mic on him and everything, and they do an interview or whatever. And then after the interview, he takes the mic off, and he sits down on the bed. And sticks his hand in his pants oh my God. and starts playing with himself. Well, this is in the movie. Well, but that, <laughs> we haven't I, we haven't seen the movie yet, but um, apparently she did try. She did seduce him, but still. Well, no, that's fine. It's all fair when it comes <laughs> but she, to. But, what, but he was informed that she was only fifteen. She's not really fifteen, oh but God. she she was supposed to be fifteen. <laughs> the daughter of, of Borat. <laughs> and Borat was bringing her to America to present her to the pr prime premier. <laughs> Wait a minute. And, yeah, and you're telling me that Ju Giuliani didn't know who Borat was? Yeah, yeah I guess so. <laughs> I mean, if you see Borat coming at you, you know what? The fix is in, right? I know. Yeah. You would think so. They, wow. They, yeah, the, the trailer in this interview I saw, yeah, they, he, Borat, or, you know, uh, Sasha, he, he he snuck into the one of the Trump rallies or or, or Pence's rallies, and he yeah Pence's rally. And he was dressed up as uh, Trump, and he had the girl, he had his sister over his shoulder, saying, "I have I have the girl for you, Trump. I have the girl." <laughs> I gotta say, he's a national treasure. I don't care what. He's <laughs> yeah, but he's English, you know. That's true. Yeah. 
there, there's a there's a picture on on Facebook. I saw a meme, and it had it had Giuliani with a with a fake mustache. You know, and he says, "Hello, I've come to turn my laptop in to get fixed. My name is Biden." <laughs> Have you seen the other picture he sent around where you know he wore that that mankini in the original film? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, now it's a face mask. Yeah. And it says wear a mask. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I'm looking I'm looking forward to it, you know. I mean but uh uh the, the well, what's going to happen tomorrow night? That's uh, yeah. Uh well, we'll be on right yeah, after it's over. We can we can discuss that one. Uh boy, <laughs> I'm telling you. It, it, Mike's not going to stop him. I, he'll just run over to Biden's mic and you yeah. start yelling in it, you know. I'll just talk louder, yeah. They say his people are telling him, cool it. Don't do <laughs> any of that, right? Good but, luck with that. But they no, say yeah. that he doesn't like, listen to anybody. <laughs> yes, uh, Tom, Tom's got his hand up. Yeah, we've got about 10 more minutes of program. I thought uh, before we end, uh, would you like a visit from the Crypt Keeper? Uh, I got a death to announce tonight. Uh, I, I think I know what death you're going to mention. Oh, I know. If James you, Randy. Yeah. Oh, James Randy, yes. Oh. James Randy is a magician oh, and no. a, a debunker of, uh, what could we, how could we put it, of uh, hoaxes, of medical hoaxes and activity. so on. Yeah. The, the Amazing Randy? Yeah, The Amazing yeah. Randy. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I, I've met Randy on a couple of occasions. I met him with Penn and Teller. Uh, mm -hmm. and um, uh, nice guy, nice guy. And uh, and if, and if you want to see a great movie, if you want to see a great movie, uh, An Honest Liar, yes, which uh, a lot of it was narrated by your friend uh, Jamie Ian Swiss. Uh huh, yeah, it's a very, very have you seen it? Uh, yes, I have. I have. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a great movie, huh? yeah, yeah, uh, it's terrific. Uh, he, yeah. uh, you know, he went around debunking uh, medical hoaxes and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and people who would do like faith healers and so on and yeah. so forth. He was the guy who actually uh, found Peter that uh, what was his name? The one that, uh, Peter, that, that Peter Popov, who we we've pranked oh. a bit. Uh, Peter Popov was his healer, and mm -hmm. he found out that the reason he knew what was going on and what he could tell people, oh, and you're, it's your mother and she died and blah 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 blah, is that he had a, a bug in his ear, yep. and they had a frequency. And James Randi found the frequency, and they recorded it, and then played it against the television broadcast, and completely ruined, at least at the time, Popov's career. Uh, that was the kind of stuff he did. But there was one other death tonight. You missed it, Tom. Oh, I missed it. You missed What's it. That? Missed it. This is kind of a good one. March champion. Okay, March and Gower champion. Remember Marge and Gower champion? They were dancers. They were in MGM films. Prior to uh, to that, uh, she was, I can't remember what her na real name was. She worked for Disney, and she was the model for Snow White. Oh. oh. And uh, she married Art Babbitt, oh. who was a lead animator at Disney, who is the father of our good friend, my good friend, and you probably know who I'm talking about, Tom, uh, Karen Babbitt. Oh. Yeah. She died 101 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Snow White is dead, ladies Snow and White gentlemen. Died. I'm here tonight to tell you Snow White okay. off, the, off the planet. You should be interested in that one, Tony, since you... Yeah, I do like... I didn't know. I don't know the old actors like that. I check you probably not. Yeah. Well, yeah, they always used... They always used, uh, especially for live characters like that, they... Well, they, even for some of the really accentuated caricatures, they would use real models so they could get the motion animated. And, and I do love the old Disney classic cartoons. I'll never get bored of watching those old Pinocchio movies. I think yeah. they look... Although I have to say, you know, when I watch uh, the stuff that's being done on uh, with computers, they're doing some amazingly good animation. You know, I think I think Disney actually would have appreciated it. Oh yeah, you know? I uh, agree. Uh, Has anyone seen the um, the documentary about the killings of Sam Cooke? No. 
Oh, it's great. It's on Netflix. I think it's something like the two murders or two killings of Sam Cooke. And it describes Sam Cooke's death. Mm -hmm. But it really is a documentary about race relations back in the 50s. Right. And how Mm -hmm. our black artists, you know, suffered from all kinds of uh, all kinds of prejudices and so forth. Smokey Robinson takes part. Um, it, it's it's well worth your time. I, I I will I will check that out. Um, what do, what else did I watch? Well, I watched the, the Chicago Seven, which I enjoyed. Well, and there was one other thing we watched. Oh, tonight on PBS, uh, they what? did uh, uh, a um, what do you call it? The what's the, the I'm trying to remember the name of the series now. American Masters. American Ma Masters, yeah, on Walter Winchell. Yeah, that was good. I watched that. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't know who Walter Winchell was or you want to be apprised of him, uh, he he's kind of the father of the kind of gossip journalism we do today, you know. And um, uh, it, it's kind of an amazing story. It's, uh, and it's, it's a life I'm glad they did him, you know, warts and all, because he, mm -hmm. he was a terrible person. Uh, who is it? Did you know that guy uh, who was a big DJ in New York that they were talking about? Yeah, I know was that. You know why I know him? Billy Ward. He was something? he was my mentor. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. uh, Barry Gray. Barry Gray. That was yeah. Good. And oh. and what I did is he had a show Monday through Fridays at eleven to one in the morning. Mm -hmm. Did it out of this big studio, and uh, then on Saturday I did his slot out of that studio. So I was kind of the Saturday night Barry Gray. So yeah, absolutely, I remember Barry Gray. And uh -huh. to my way of thinking, one of the best interviewers I ever heard in my life. And I, I learned a lot by watching him and hanging out with him and you know, seeing how he operated. Uh, and um, not the nicest of people, but certainly I felt that at a certain point he kind of mentored me and you know was was on my side, so to speak. I mean, let me do a show on Saturday nights. Yeah. You know. Happy birthday. I used to listen to him oh, every where, night. Where, where my, where my uh, uh, what do you call it? My, what do you call it? My uh, 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 board op was Jimmy Walker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. JJ from uh, Good Time. Hello. Hello. Hi. Happy Hi. birthday. Hey, Let's all sing. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to, to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Adrian. Happy birthday to you. So I hear you're 60 years old. 60. <laughs> Five? No. Five? Yeah, I'm this many. Right. You know, you know how I, I'm, I'm this many. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I get oh, arthritis. You know uh, yeah, so, I, mean, I, I get. Uh, more, huh? She thinks she thinks your your age depends on your height, so she thinks I'm older than everybody. Wow. <laughs> and you are. Because you're old because you're so tall, so you're the oldest of everybody. So well, even the parents, yes, yeah. she thinks I'm older than Happy the birthday, Adrian. Happy birthday. Yeah, and many, many more. Uh, and and thank you, Jeff for being here and thank you robert always a pleasure thank you brian and the lovely and attractive adrian and uh, charlie wallace and tom yamaguchi and tony thank you with that wallpaper i like it when you sit there because it kind of dims the wallpaper <laughs> and uh and and uh, of course our, our good friend mr haney john larkin thank you all why don't you all give a big wave goodbye Okay, and I'll wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. There's our citizen panel leaving us at this moment. Coming up next, another citizen panel starring the uh, beautiful and attractive uh, Jack Bishop. And he'll have a citizen's panel that he's going to do on Skype. GabNet Live is the address for Skype. I'll be back here again tomorrow night, right after the debate. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, yeah, you know what I'm going to say. Be safe out there and wear a mask. Good night, everybody. Good night.